All right, welcome to my acceleration-based uh, train refueling system. This is 100% vanilla. However, there are a couple of mods I'm using to showcase it and explain how it works. One is Magic Lamp right here. There's actually two of them. Uh, these text plates, that's a mod. Um, and I'm also using editor extensions just to power everything and just keep it nice and clean. Uh, I am in editor mode. You can enter this by typing into the console forward slash editor. And that will give you some extra controls, like being able to pause time and progress the game tick by tick. Really powerful, really useful. You won't need it to use the system. Um, so let's get right down to it. So we have our train here. It's a basic schedule, load station, unload station, refueling station. The problem is I don't want this train to go to the refueling station every cycle. I only want it to come here when it's actually low on fuel. That will drastically cut down on congestion and logistics. But this video isn't so much about how this, uh, why I've developed the system. It's more about how it works. There's a full write-up on Reddit. Okay, so this detector station needs to identify that a train is in the station and activate the dummy. That will prevent trains from accidentally passing to the dummy and causing problems. Uh, it needs to time how long it takes the train to leave this station and cross the threshold of this signal. If that time is too long, I need the station, the dummy station, to disable and force the train to repath up here to the refueling station. However, if the train does not take too long, I need the train to stop here, satisfy the refueling station requirement, and then proceed over to the loading station. Um, like I said, I'm not using a lot of components to make this system work. It's very basic. However, there's a couple of tricks to it, and it's doing quite a few things. We're going to start off with this train in a low fuel condition. This train car has nuclear fuel in it. That's all good. Um, I'm actually going to pop those two out. There's just one nuclear fuel in there, but that's all good. And this train has our dummy fuel, wood. Uh, you can use the system with only a single locomotive. However, wood will not work for the dummy fuel. The train will just run out of fuel before it gets to the refueling station. Instead, I've got prints to use rocket fuel. It'll work great, except the rocket fuel will take a while to burn all the way through. The train may go to the refueling station a few more times than necessary before it's consumed it and resumes normal operation. Anyway, let's see how this detector works. Let's head off to the unload station. Okay, and around the track we come. Now, before we actually engage with the station, let's turn our magic lamp on and let's see what the system sees. The system really only cares about the yellow signal. And this is a big yellow signal. It's actually just below the integer overflow point. The integer overflow point is 2 billion 147,483,647. That means that if a number exceeds that 47, it will overflow, this number will become negative, and we're going to use that to help control our station. But the default state is this value, this very large value, ending in 28. So, we will come back to this number First off, let's start with um, the train being detected as being present in the station to activate the dummy. That is triggered by this rail signal. This rail signal will output yellow when it's actually turned red. The signal only turns red when a train is present, and it will output that yellow signal. It will change this into 29 instead of 28. That will activate the dummy station, because the dummy station is listening for yellow greater than 28, which is the default setting. Okay, so let's watch that really quick. And bang, 29. The dummy station is now active. The train pulls into the station, and it will wait here for one second. Okay, so the train is now waited here for one second. The next ticket will depart the station 
and it will path to this station. That event will trigger the rail signal to turn yellow. This is a basic rail signal, nothing funny going on here. Read signal, it's outputting the normal colors. And as soon as it outputs yellow, this counter will start counting yellow and it will feed back on itself on the green wire and it will see yellow one on the first tick. And then it will output yellow one to itself and read from the signal and it will see yellow two. And it will count that and output it and so on and so forth until it sees a red signal. So long as there is no red signal, we will continue to output the yellow input count. As soon as that red signal shows up, this yellow count disappears. Now this is important because if this train takes too long to cross this threshold and the yellow value counts beyond 18 on this test track, this number will overflow and become negative. If this number overflows and becomes negative, the dummy station will disable because a negative value is not greater than 2 billion and change. So, how long is it going to take for this train to get here? Signal is yellow. We are now counting because we do not see a red signal. The train's getting close, and this is it right here. This is where it should stop if this train has nuclear fuel. But it doesn't. This train is running on wood right now. Acceleration has been reduced. So, here's our overflow value. If the train takes any longer to cross the signal threshold, this will overflow, disabling the dummy station and sending our empty train to go refuel. Bang, there it is. The count has exceeded that value. There's a slight delay between the counter and the magic lamp. Uh, that's why the counter says 21 and 20 instead of 19. The magic lamp is currently only seeing 19. Anyway, the dummy station has disabled. This train, which is pathing to the dummy station, will now be forced to repath to the refueling station. One more tick, bang. It's now heading off to refuel just as we wanted. And this counter will reset as soon as it sees red. There's our red signal. That has reset. Now that it's reset, this entire station will reset to uh, almost the default state. As soon as it passes this signal, it will go back to 28. Okay, so now we can see the train could have gone to the loading station, but because it couldn't stop at the dummy, it's forced to repath to the refueling station. Okay, so what do we have going on here? This inserter is inserting nuclear fuel into the second locomotive. We don't care about the second locomotive so long as we put fuel in it. What we care about is the first locomotive, because that is how we are modifying our acceleration. Taking a look at the fuel, these fuel slots are consumed and refilled from left to right. That means that we must insert two nuclear fuels, then insert one wood. If we don't do that, we cause problems. This counter is going to allow us to control the fuel loading behavior. As you can see right off the bat, this inserter is enabled. This inserter will insert nuclear fuel and it is listening to this decider combinator and it is listening for nuclear fuel less than two. So long as nuclear fuel is less than two, this inserter will be active and it will insert nuclear fuel. Now, uh, it's reading its hand contents and it's set to pulse. That is how we are increasing the count on this counter. Taking a look at the counter, it will count that nuclear fuel that it gets a pulse of, so long as there's no wood. As soon as it sees wood is being loaded, it will reset the counter. And that is important because the wood inserter, the second one here, it is only active when nuclear fuel equals two. So this counter will count up to two nuclear fuel this inserter will become active, pick up that wood, and reset the counter all within a couple of ticks. But that small delay is all we need to load the train in the appropriate manner. So, let's set our lamp here to show us what the memory sees. And let's watch the train roll in. 
And the train is at a stop. Okay. We're fueling up the second car. Awesome. And we are going to fuel up the first car. Now we've picked up our nuclear fuel and it has been recorded by the memory cell. The memory cell doesn't see wood, so it does not erase the signal. The second inserter does not see two nuclear fuel, so it remains disabled. And the first inserter still sees nuclear fuel as less than two, so it will insert this fuel and go back for another. And bang! That is our second nuclear fuel. It'll take a tick to hit the memory and trigger the wood. Uh, it takes about two ticks to trigger the wood pickup, which will then clear the memory. And there's our piece of wood. And memory sees the wood and it will now reset. Memory is reset. So this will re-enable the nuclear fuel inserter, but that's not going to matter. The nuclear fuel is inserted, the wood is inserted, even though the nuclear fuel inserter is now active, there's no room for any more fuel. We can't put anything else in here, so we just go back to doing nothing. Now, this whole process takes about three quarters of a second. This is a quick fuel stop. Actually, that last car didn't quite refuel. I might have to modify that. Huh, interesting. Let's increase that to two seconds. Okay, so now our train has been fully refueled. It's taken a little bit over a second. Um, it is now ready to go back into service. And as we can see, these other two inserters are doing nothing because they can do nothing. And now the train will go back to the load station. Oh, I'd have to wait here. There we go. And there we see it's going back to the load station. And then after the load station, it will follow through the schedule and we'll go to the unload station. Let's watch it roll through. So now the train is rocking and rolling on nuclear fuel. It has maximum acceleration. So let's see how our detector works this time. The station's at the default setting, 28. The uh, dummy station is inactive. As soon as we cross that threshold, the dummy station is active. We see 29. This is all good, the same as we saw before. We will wait for our second to pass. OK. The train is now passing to this station, and we are counting yellow. Last time, we exceeded 18. This time, we should not. Here's our 18. There's our red signal. The magic lamp just caught up. The memory cell clears because it sees red. But we can see that we have not exceeded the yellow signal. But there's no more yellow signal going to the dummy station. Instead, it resets to the default 28 plus the train present. The dummy station remains active, and the train is allowed to stop. Now, we don't want the train to sit here for two seconds for no reason. Instead, we want it to stop, see that yellow is greater than zero, because it sure is, and then we want it to head off on its merry way back to the load station. And it's going to continue to do that until it runs low on fuel again. And that's going to take quite a while, because this is a small test track. Now, we're not going to sit here forever and watch that, but it's neat to see the train will only stop the refueling station when it actually needs to. So that's all well and good, but what if you've got four locomotives and 20 wagons? What's your interval between these two spots? Well, personally, I actually don't know. There's no way for me to know. There's too many variables. I can't determine that for you. But what I can do is create a little circuit that you can just stamp down on the detector and it will tell you what your interval is, and it will allow you to modify your interval and customize your station to whatever trains you want to use. Okay, so again, the magic lamp is not required. I'm only using it to help show you what's going on here. This little circuit will be triggered as soon as the signal turns red. It will remember our interval 
and the interval is what we modify the constant combinator and the dummy station by. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Train pulls in, nothing changes, there's no red signal yet, but we want this train to finish here, we want it to path through, don't forget we have this train running on nuclear fuel, this is my desired configuration for the test track, yours will be different, so don't run this until you have the right trains with the right fuel running through it, because this circle will only work once. That way it'll remember your interval for as long as you need it to, and you can just delete it. All right, so we're moving through. We know that this count needs to be 18, because that's our acceleration for the train. 19. Now, this is the count. 18 is the count. The interval includes this yellow, dictating that the train is present. So we need to reduce the constant combinator and this station by 19. So if we take a look at the prints, this is the station print that you might put down. Here's our constant combinator, here's our dummy station. This is the threshold for the integer overflow, and so we just reduce this by 19. I already know that's going to be 28, because that's what the test track is using. 28, 28, and we're done. That's it. This station is now ready to use. There's no more modification required. As long as you have fuel going to the refueling station and you've modified this, you're good to go. And uh, as we saw before, this circuit's not required to run your trains. It's just to identify the interval. You might have a variety of different train links. Maybe you want to remember that. Maybe you don't. Either way, it's not required. Now, there's one more quirk to this system, and that is the fuel. It's very specific. You need to ensure that the fuel is loaded in a specific order. There's a few different ways that you can solve this problem, um, but you might want to know when there's a problem before your trains leave the refueling station. And so I have this little setup. You just stamp it on here. There's a few different ways that you can be alerted to a problem. Um, this isn't required. I've just made it so that it's available if you want it. Otherwise, feel free to do as you please. Maybe you will never ever run out of fuel and you'll be perfectly happy. So what does the circuit do? It listens to these chests. You can also have it listen to belts or whatever you want, but this circuit is listening to these chests. The first combinator is listening for rocket fuel greater than or, sorry, it's listening for rocket fuel less than 10. If there's not 10 rocket fuel in here, sorry, nuclear fuel, if there's not 10 nuclear fuel in here, I think that's a problem. I don't want trains coming here. This decider combinator is listening for wood less than 100. If it doesn't see wood less than 100, it will output red. Both of them will actually output red. That allows us to use a single signal which will close if it sees one of those red, or both, anything greater than zero. And this siren will also sound off, but only for a single blast when it sees red. So the signal will stay closed, but the signal will only fire once. Um, sorry, the signal. The programmable speaker will only fire once, but it will ping the map. It will show a global alert. You'll hear it no matter where you are. And we make it fire only once by inverting the red signal. Just multiplying it by negative one and only sending that to the speaker. That will let it fire once and then never again. So what does that sound like? That sounds like nothing at all. Oops, wrong color wire. That's what it sounds like. This signal is now stopped because we can no longer see a nuclear fuel signal because I just cut the wire, and we heard one blast. I hate it when these sirens go off forever. It's just irritating. It takes me too long to fix them. Uh, so that's why I did that. Anyway, this circuit's not required either. Use it at your leisure. I've just included it because maybe you'll find it handy. So anyway, that is the acceleration-based train refueling system.